good to see everybody. But let's go to the Lord in prayer about these requests and about this service that God's will would be done. Jesus, we love you today. We're so thankful for the joy there is in serving you. We thank you for the privilege today to come boldly to your throne. To obtain mercy and find grace to help in our time of need. Lord, we lift up Brother Wayne Gathright, Sister Becky Hanson. We believe in God that you are greater than all things. God, that you're healed of all disease. And we're just asking you, God, thank you for the good report. Brother Gathright, ask you to touch him today. We pray for the Meyer family bring comfort today. We pray for Sister Gina. Lord, we pray for Sister Dupree in the Northland Church. We just ask you to bless them, Lord. We just rebuke COVID from our, our city and our county and our nation. Just continue to protect your people, God. Give them strength. Oh, hallelujah. We thank you for what you're going to do today. Thank you for what I feel in my heart and my heart. Let faith rise within us today. Believe in you, God, for, uh, for greater things. We love you today. And we thank you. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's continue to lift up Jesus. Let's continue to magnify the Lord today. If you're here and need prayer, feel free to come up at any time. We'll be glad to pray with you. Hallelujah. We know the Lord's here to heal you today. Hallelujah. But let's entertain the presence of the Lord. Let's lift up Jesus. And be able to bring our mind, our thoughts, our hearts focused on Him. And let God move today. In Jesus' name.
glory Feels like heaven on earth Something's moving Something's changing See his glory Feels like heaven on earth Something's moving Something's changing See his glory Feels like heaven on earth Something's moving Something's changing See his glory Something's changing, see it grow. 
uh, this is a real virus and it is affecting people. And um, so we just do what we can uh, to take some precautions. I'd ask you to pray uh, for the Northfield Church. Uh, Sister Dupree, as I understand it, has come down with COVID. And I don't know who else, so they're not having services for the next couple weeks while they quarantine. Remember them, our neighboring pastor and wife. Let's remember them. Uh, hallelujah. Praise God. Uh, but we're going to get into the Word of God here in a moment. But we're just going to worship Him one more time through song. So I'd like to encourage you today to just kind of bring your mind focus as we have this great spirit here today. And as they begin to lift up their voices, let's begin to magnify the Lord one more time in Jesus' name.
that we can walk in there. We spoke about liberty and not being bound and the things that bind us. And then Wednesday uh, talked about the Greek word for power, Azusa, which means to walk right. Means liberty and authority. Not only though can I walk right in liberty, I can walk in might with Holy Ghost power. But today's subject comes from this conversation with this king and his people. And he said they are more and mightier. That phrase just kind of going over in my spirit today. And so I want to talk to you about that, about more yeah. and mightier. Yeah. See, I, I believe that is who we are in the Lord. I, I believe that we've been born again of water and spirit. If we're walking in a new birth relationship with him, we're living a life that is pleasing to him, being led of his spirit and, and obeying his word. I, I believe that gives us strength and that we are his children and who he declares us to be is more and mighty. Amen. You know, Israel's problem, you, you look at their story and you see it throughout their story. Their problem was they never believed they were more and mighty. Right. That, they just never believed it. They allowed their enemy to afflict them. They cry out to the Lord and he sends a deliverer in Moses. Moses brings him through the promised land. So many great things that happened. And in the middle, Israel's still complaining. And they're still murmuring. They got, they're still struggling with believing who their God is and who they are in him. And so you get to the end of that story and you notice the conversation with the 12 spies that returned from searching out the promised land of Canaan. And Numbers 13, 27 uh, again, in the New King James Version said, they told him and said, we went to the land where you sent us. It truly flows with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, I mean, I got the proof. Here's the proof. We got a testimony of all God brought us from to bring us to this point. And all of those positives don't stack up to their nevertheless. The people who dwell in the land are strong. Amen. Their cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, if that wasn't enough, we saw the descendants of Anna there. Notice the thinking of the ten spots. The people and their cities are stronger than we are. And moreover, the, the children of Anak were the descendants of giants, and so there's giants in the land. They're standing on the threshold of their promises. And they're saying, no, we can't go because the enemy is too strong and too mighty for us. I like the fact that Caleb stilled the people. He quieted the people at once. Caleb stopped the people's conversation immediately because he recognized it was not a faith but a fear and unbelief. Caleb deals with the conversation and their thinking, their thought process immediately. Just as Jesus did when word came to Jairus that his daughter was dead and Jesus immediately responds with, fear not, believe only and she shall be made whole and she was. Caleb steals the people. He stops the voice of the doubters, of the unbelievers, of the naysayers. He quiets that voice and says, let's go up at once and take possession. Why are we hesitating? Why are we stopping? Why, why, why are you saying nevertheless, let's go right now? This is where we've been marching to. This is what we've been hoping for. This is what we've been God for. Why are you stopping? The prophet would ask those around, why do you hold between two opinions? Why are you stuck between two thought processes? And so he says, let's go at once and take possession for we are well able to overcome. Caleb is speaking 
what he believes. Yeah. Yeah. He believes. He has complete faith and belief that he is, they are well able. Yeah. I believe he's saying we are more and we are mightier. Right. When I look at the opposition, we're more. When we step up to God, we're mightier. Verse 31, the man who had gone up with him said, we are not able to go up against the people. They are stronger than we. They gave the children of Israel a bad report. King James says, evil report of the land which they had spied out, saying, the land through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants. And all the people whom we saw in it are the men of great statue. All we saw was men of great statue. And there we saw the giants, the descendants of Anak. Notice the problem was what they believed based on what they saw. Yeah, yeah. But I read somewhere we're supposed to not walk by sight, but by faith. Caleb's yeah. not worried about what he sees. He has faith in what he believes and knows. And that's with God they are more Mighty. See, the problem was their, their belief, what they were thinking, what they believed. Belief was the the, the, the new king, uh, the new king, excuse me, in Genesis or Exodus, his worst nightmare. His worst nightmare, that king going back to him, was that Israel would believe that they were more and mighty. He knew they were more admired. That's why they had to deal shrewdly. What he didn't want to happen was them to believe. Hello. God knows what he sees in us. He knows what he's spoken to us. What the enemy doesn't want is for us to believe what God's saying to us. See, I feel like the Spirit is saying today that we need to be reminded and we need to embrace the fact that we really are more and mightier through him. Yes, yes. That we really are more than conquerors through him that loved us. That we really need to believe that, not just say that. Because the real issue individually is do we believe we are more and mightier through him? Was stronger than they were. They believed the evil report. They saw all the people of great stature and the giants. And it affected what they saw, affected their thinking and their beliefs. In fact, the latter part of verse 33 says, We were like grasshoppers in our own sight. It doesn't say we were like grasshoppers in the enemy's sight. It says we were grasshoppers in our sight. That's what we thought of ourselves. That's how we perceive ourselves. And as a result of our perception and our belief, that's what we became in their sight. See, what they saw affected what they believed. They believed they were grasshoppers. They believed they were bugs among giants. But the enemy knew the truth. They were really the giants among the bugs. Yeah. Yeah. See, they didn't believe what Joshua and Caleb believed. That they really were more inviting, that they really could enter the promised land at once. And it cost them their promised land. Yeah. Yeah. The author of Hebrews chapter 3 said of Israel that they could not enter in. Because of unbelief. Because of their stinking thinking. Because of what they thought. Their personal unbelief kept them from their personal promised land. See, our enemy is defeated. How many believe that? And he knows that. But like the new king over Egypt, he attempts to put on us more to afflict us and to make us serve with rigor and hard bondage. Because he knows if we would ever begin to see who we really are in him. What we 
really have inherited as heirs and joint heirs with Jesus. And if we would ever really begin to believe consistently that we really are my more and mightier in him, our enemy knows he'd be in trouble. It's a fact today. God has not changed. He has not changed. Malachi 3, I am the Lord, I change not. Psalms 102, 27, thou art the same and thy years have no end. Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. It's a fact. God has not changed. His word has not changed. Even though we live in the world, there are lots of things change. God and his word, his promises have not changed. Amen. It is also a fact that I believe the devil and his plans, his agenda, has not changed. He still wants to steal, kill, and destroy. He continues to do everything he can to distract and wear out God's people, keeping them from becoming who God means for them to be. I firmly believe God and even our enemy, the devil, know that we really are meant to be more and mightier through him. Genesis 26 and 16. Abimelech said to Isaac, go from us, for thou art much mightier than we. Yeah. Abimelech recognized Isaac was much mightier than them. They recognized him. And I believe that God recognize it. And I believe some recognize it in themselves and what God is doing in others. God really is doing more and mightier through his people. And we need to recognize what God's doing. Where our strength comes from. Psalm 105, 23 and 24, Israel also came into Egypt and Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham and he increased his people greatly and made them stronger than their Amen. The psalmist declared that the, the Lord increased his people greatly. He made them stronger than their enemy. Church, I really believe God is desires to increase his people greatly. Yeah. He wants us to grow. He wants us to be strong. He wants our faith to grow. Amen. I really believe that we are made. Because he's made us free and he's filled us with his spirit. I believe we really are stronger than our enemy. But I also believe that God and the devil know it. But what is important and what I'm trying to emphasize today is it's vital what we believe. First John 4 and 4, ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Why have we overcome them? Because greater is he that is in you yes. than he yes. that is in the world. Yes. He said, greater is he that's in you than he running around the world. See, we are more and mightier because greater yes. is he that's within us. Yes. Yes. Let me just ask you another question. What changes when God does it? I already said he does that. Why are we up one minute and down the next? Why does our confidence in God sometimes soar and other times we find ourselves questioning if he's even there? What changes? Not God. He's the same. Not the devil. He's still defeated. He's still lying, stealing, killing, and destroying. So what changes when God does it? Yes, circumstances. Yes, situations. But more importantly, we change. Specifically, our thinking and our faith changes. See, what can change day to day and moment by moment is our thought process. Because when circumstances change and we allow fear to begin to dictate to our thinking and faith, all of a sudden what changes is our beliefs. Yeah. 
Because we allow it to be dependent on the things changing outside instead of being anchored to what never changes. This word and the God we put our faith in. He doesn't change. His promises don't change. What he declares in his word doesn't change. What changes is circumstances in life. And that's just part of life. There's seasons of things. But just because circumstances change, just because life changes, just because things change, doesn't mean our faith should waver. It doesn't mean our thoughts should, should stir and change. See, even though God's Word teaches that we can do all things through Christ, sometimes we struggle believing. And the problem is our view. Because we see ourselves sometimes as bugs or grasshoppers instead of more and mighty. Yeah. Right. Come on. And really our view and our perspective, if it's based on the unchanging word of God, really should not change. Come on. Right. Come on. See, Israel's issue and ours too is what I'll just call limiting. Beliefs. Limiting beliefs. We put God in a box. We limit God to a certain amount of parameters. And as long as everything is nice and neat and, and okay in our world, our parameters, things are good. But when things start to extend beyond our comfort zone, we got to be careful not to allow that stinking thinking, that carnal thinking to rise up and change what we believe. See, we place limits on God. He can do this, but I'm not sure he can do that. As I said, that's that carnal man, that's that stinking thinking. It limits our faith in God. Elijah saw miracles one minute on Mount Carmel and he's running from his, for his life the next from threats from Jezebel. In 1 Kings 19 and 3, when he saw that he rose, he went for his life. Verse 4, he himself went a day's journey in the wilderness, sat down under a juniper tree and requested for himself that he might die. He said, it is enough now, O Lord, take away my life. I'm not any better than my father. What changed? What caused him to run and ask for him, for him to die in his life? Not God. God stayed the same. Not the devil. He was still lying and trying to destroy God's people. What changed? The prophet's perspective. His belief. Jezebel's words had penetrated his heart and discouraged him. Her words got in and anchored and caused him to despair and become disillusioned to where he started to see things differently because he started to believe things differently because he started embracing the wrong words. Amen. He embraced Jezebel's words instead of the word. He thought he was alone, but he wasn't. And neither are we. See, the Lord is our strength. Just as much as he was his strength. And when we are weak, he really is strong. I really believe that in our weakest moment, God proves he's the strongest. That he proves in our weakest moment that he is more than enough and he is mightier than all. See, we can't allow changing circumstance and attacks of the enemy to cause us to change our thinking our faith and belief in God. We've got to constantly believe and remind ourselves who we are in Him and who we are in Him because of Him is more and mighty. Yes. Yes. Consider the mighty saints. Miracles one minute. Kills a thousand men with the jawbone of a donkey. Throws it aside and then thinks he's going to die from thirst. What changed? Not God. He used the same instrument to kill a thousand and bring water. Amen. Yeah, yeah. 
So what changed was Samson's thinking. He allowed the circumstances to affect his thought process and his faith. What about Peter? He's walking on water one minute and sinking the next. Why? Because he took his eyes off of Jesus, the source of his strength and faith. Because Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. Which is why we must daily look to him. See, the fact that God is for us has not changed. But we don't always believe it. We often limit our faith and belief in God during those difficult times. Those times when the pocketbook's a little tight. Those, those times when the office rumor about layoffs seems to be coming up more frequently. Come on. The, the times when there's frustration because our expectations are not being met. Yeah. Our mind wanders. That stinking thinking starts to really creep up. Yeah. And by allowing that, we limit God. Not that God's ever limited, but we personally limit him in our life because it's all about faith. Yeah. We must believe he is, and we must believe he rewards those that diligently seek him. See, the new king was worried. If Israel ever began to believe what he knew, that they were more and mighty, then the new king knew he was in trouble. So he kept them distracted. He kept them afflicted. He kept them weighted down. You know, every day we have a choice. Every day we must uh, deny ourselves and daily take up our cross and follow him. Every day we have a choice to seek him first. Every day we have a we have a choice. Are we going to focus on the problem or are we going to focus on the problem solved? Every day we have a choice. Are we going to allow affliction to speak to us or are we going to speak to the affliction in the name of yes. Jesus? See, the point is we must overcome these limiting beliefs because they stop us from more. They stop us from going and growing deeper in our relationship with God by faith. See, God will not change. He will do what he says he will do. But that's true of our enemy. His tactics don't change either. He's still a thief. He's still a liar. One of his tactics uh, we see in Judges 16 and 16. It came to pass, speaking of Delilah, when she pressed him daily with her words. And urged him so that his soul was vexed unto them. See, our enemy will continue to press us. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. With the pocketbook issues. With the health issues. With the office gossiping issues. With the frustration issues. He'll press us. He'll keep pushing them in our face. That's what Potiphar's wife did to Joseph. Genesis 39.10, and it came to pass that she spoke to Joseph day by day. She pressed him daily. She tried to get him to lose focus and forget his promise to his God, his commitment and consecration, and do what she wanted. She pressed him day by day. And that's what the devil does because he keeps pushing the words so eventually the words might penetrate. Yeah. Yeah. And if we can penetrate our heart and mind, then it will change and it will limit what God's trying to do. All I'm trying to encourage us to do is realize who we are every day. We are more and mightier. And instead of every day allowing the enemy's words to press upon us, we just got to daily stay in the word. Yeah. And stay standing on the word. And each day remind ourselves of who we are in Him. Do, do what Psalms 37 and 3 says. Trust in the Lord and do good. So that should be our daily goal. Just to trust Him and do good. Just put my trust, my faith in Him and obey His word. Just do what's pleasing in His 
sight. Because I trust and I believe that if I will trust him with all my heart and not lean to my own understanding and I'll acknowledge him in all of my ways, I believe he'll direct my path. I believe that if I'll trust him and just do the good he's called me to do, that he will keep me in the land. Keep me in the land, and he'll feed me daily. He'll provide. That he'll supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. See, I believe that if, if we do our part, God will do his part. But in the process of doing our part, we can't allow limiting beliefs. We can't allow the enemy's daily pressures to affect our thinking. See, so we got to remember daily who we are, who we serve, and stop listening to the enemy. Stop allowing the enemy and the things of the day to limit our faith. I believe we're living in the last days. I really do. Yes. And I also believe they are exciting days. Yes. Now, some of you just when I said that, who might be limiting what God can do in these days, you may not see these days as exciting. But I really do believe God is up to something. Yes, He is. Yes, He is. I really do. And I'm not going to let these days cause me to lose hope in the one I'm anchored to. See, I really believe God desires your best and my best now. Yeah. Call to the kingdom for such a time as this. God knows what he's doing. All of this is written in the book. It's all going to come to pass and we know how it ends. So if we know how it ends and we believe in the 11th hour and we believe that he's wrapping it up, then God is looking for his bride to do her
this church, the church, is really a spiritual hospital. Yes. The people coming in. Yes. God's looking for those that are here. Yes. The attending physicians, if you would, to do their best with those that God brings into his life. Yes. Philippians 2.13 tells us it's God that works in us.
us. Let's pray. These altars are open. I love you. God bless you.